G'day, I'm Benny Wellington from 101 Tokens. I started a movement of fed up people determined to build a healthy relationship with alcohol. Owning your drinking, healthier relationship with yourself too. It's science. We've got an app. It's been downloaded 12,000 times in 76 different countries. It's your drinking accountability buddy. All you do is go out drinking. Next day, ask yourself whether it was worth it or not. Yay or nay, that's it. It allows you to identify traits and habits. Knock out the bad ones, like blacking out, letting people down, being a dickhead, losing cash, and pump up the good ones, like social connection, deep conversation, and slightly better dance moves. We've saved relationships, jobs, and even lives, which is rad, but it's not all shooting rainbows out our butts. There was a problem. People were slipping back into old behaviors, sometimes even worse, which is shit. The diagnosis, we're totally online. We already spend way too much time there. And I don't want to be another cold-hearted overlord facilitator of human disconnection. Fuck that. So my buddy Josh and I asked one question. How can we create a safe place for people to come together over a beer, maybe waters, maybe kombuchas, and have a true conversation? Maybe even inspire others to run their own in their own towns. This is the kind of growth the world needs. Not more Instagrammers, not more Silicon Valley fucking unicorns. The growth of connection, the growth of frothy conversation. Over a frothy. Speaking of frothers, we look to our buddies at One Wave and their fluoro gatherings. They get people together on a Friday morning, ask each other how they're going, and free the funk from the week. It's an open circle conversation before they all go surfing in solidarity. Epic. When it comes to drinking, Friday night is the time when our weekends hang in the balance. We have the week's pent up pressure of things that don't really matter. And many tend to drink into oblivion. Some would say blowing a fun valve. And how do I know? I used to bend our Friday Arvo to Sunday when the pub shut. And Monday? Fuck Mondays. I call this the drink drunk regret suppress cycle. It's a real pit of despair and so many of us find ourselves trapped in the vice of it. So what's the solution? Friday Drinks Club, that's what? Friday Drinks Club! Yee-hoo. Our first event was Bondi Beach. 10 people. Some guidelines. Respect each other. One person talks at a time. But the first rule of Drinks Club? You don't talk about Drinks Club. It's a safe container and nothing said is allowed to leave. But I will say, the older crew in the group really showed up for the youth. Powerful. Powerful. And we soul jammed over craft beers. One does not only savour the flavour of the brew, they savour the flavour of the community group. By the way, I have no footage because I was in the circle, but I swear it happened. On to event two. 15 people, we found group flow. We found it! Here's where I insert a bit of Keith Sawyer and group genius. His book looks into how we can access group flow, creativity, and even solve big problems. Keithy uses improv theatre and improv jazz to show us how group flow works. This time we dropped into the space. Hot tip. You can't lead breath work while doing the breath work. One in two, three, four, five. You get, the, you get the picture. I'm not a master of breath work. We also had the sharing of an unintended ceremonial watermelon, which is now a very serious part. Keith examined these dudes, Jazz Freddy, and the alignment is unfucking canny. It's unpredictable. They don't know who is going to speak next, much less what they're going to say. The conversation went from one to another. It involved deep listening and building on the topic from before. In improv, they call this yes and. The people leave unusually long pauses between the turns of dialogue because they're just getting into flow. This didn't happen every time, but it did show up in certain parts of the conversation. It can feel awkward. We've all felt it. Awkward silence. But be patient. Embrace the silence because the magic is on the other side. There are ambiguous lines that open up possibilities. People say things like, oh, I know this is off topic. But then when they drop it in, it actually totally becomes on topic or it's weaved into the conversation. Delightful. After about 10 minutes, the basic elements of the plot emerge and the pace accelerates. The awkwardness of the first period is long forgotten. We're whipping along on a cloud of conversation. By the intermission, they created two independent plot lines. We'd move from booze to conforming to social stereotypes to toxic masculinity to expectations of young women. It got deep, deeper, and deep. In the second act, they managed to weave the two together. Now, this is where we hit the jackpot. I'm a very novice facilitator, but we had a master among us. A bloke by the name of Pete Cumming. One of those dudes that you meet and you're like, this dude's got the wisdom. He's lived that many lives. He's got that many ripping stories. But the funny thing was, he was Jedi silent for two and a half hours, just watching, just observing. And kapow! He took all of the elements of the conversation and then beautifully, poetically, weaved them into a tapestry of thought. Cheers, Pete. There was one last thing about the Byron session that relates to the power of the circle. Even an offstage actor can walk on and take the next turn. A young dude came over and asked us, what are you doing? He was confused at first. What were these guys doing sitting around listening to one person talk at a time? Heresy. Heresy? Heresy. Pete actually invited him in and he became part of the circle. See, curiosity didn't kill the cat and made the cat a frother. And this young frother dropped into group flow and now knows that these things exist. He may need one one day. He may lead one one day. Fucking epic. Post event, it was ecstatic. We'd shared cathartic stories. We'd seen ourselves in each other's stories. We built community in such a short time, we left with real hugs. Like not those sort of awkwardy like, hello. But again, rainbows buttholes.
or for every win, there are lots of losses or learnings. We tried a drinks club online, 12 signups. Josh and I were the only two that turned up. The verdict, who wants to sit on their robot on a Friday afternoon after they've been sitting there doing that all week? Not anyone, apparently. We also tried it in one of Australia's best bar breweries. 12 tickets sold, 51 interested, five turned up, four of my mates. Key problem, psychological safety is not found within a heaving bar. Drunk dickheads break the vibe. We've also had a few rain outs. Learning, shoot the clouds with laser beams. It's actually a thing. But you need those failures to learn. So more about the win. I got a phone call from Beck from the Byron crew. One of the others, Stacy, had set up a group independently and continued on Friday Drinks Club. Yes! They adapted our rules slightly and made it their own. My froth levels were now at max. This was the thing me and Joshy had set out to do. Developmental theorist Robert Keegan, or Bobby K as we like to call him, would call this a self-authoring human. In layman's terms, writing your own story, your own narrative. So here was Stacy leading with her own compass. I pondered now, we can go to different cities and towns around Australia and find the Stacys. When we leave, the conversation will continue. That's how we get progress, real change, and open up true conversations beyond the beers. It's expansion, opening our minds, solving the problems of the world and not drowning them. And one last point before I leave, rites of passage. Australians are missing rites of passage. Mine, sculling a yard glass at my 18th birthday. Losing my virginity at schoolies, which is like Aussie spring break. Not ideal. Awkward turtle. French ethnographer. French ethnographer. French ethnographer. French ethnographer Arnold Van Gennep came to Australia back in the day. He studied our indigenous rites of passage and then compared them to rites of passage around the world. Fucking radical work. Now drinks club Club isn't quite a rite of passage yet, yet. But using Gannep's structure is a pretty powerful way to kind of think, how is this working? How are people coming in and then coming out and then watch it, wah? He notes three stages. One, he notes three stages. One, the first phase of separation comprises symbolic behavior signifying the detachment of the individual or group. Joining for one drinks club circle instead of your usual pub routine. The transition liminal phase is the period between states during which one has left one place or state but has not yet entered or joined the next. Being within the circle, being in that space, there's an autonomy to it. There's no real script. Being within the circle, it's a transition phase. It's like improv. Something beautiful is going to occur, but we don't know what just yet. In the third phase, reaggregation or incorporation, having completed the right and assumed their new identity, one re-enters society with one's new status. Leaving the circle, holding the information, and embodying the fact that you now have a choice on a Friday night. You've always had a choice. You have a choice every night for that matter. We can live with intention, there are people to lean on, and we are building a tribe. Look at it like this. We want people to come and feel psychologically safe within the space. We want to connect with each other physically, eye to eye. Why being on the robot doesn't work. We want to do it grounded, on the grass, on the beach, at the foot of a mountain, at the top of a mountain, by a cactus, out in nature where we should spend more time anyway. A watermelon to share, like breaking bread, as some dude did once, and a drink, an alcoholic one or a non-alcoholic one, with no judgment. This adds to the ritual. We want to move together, ebb together, shift, flow, and froth together. Now, these are clearly far from perfect, but we are creating a movement, a Friday drinks club movement, probably the freshest way to start your weekend. So what next? We've run them in four cities now. Four. Four. With more lined up and a potential grant coming from the university where Stacy is attending. Probably should give us that grant. But back to my 101 Tokens crew. This was made for you guys with a little conceptual thinking and guidance from Jamie Wheel and the Flow Genome Project. But this is truly for anyone looking to build a healthier relationship with alcohol or just for a safe space to come and have a ripping Friday night because out the other side of genuine human connection is where we find the answers. Where those who want it can step out of their shadows and write their own stories. Fuck yeah, that's powerful. For information on running a Friday drinks club in your town, please visit FridayDrinksClub.com and have a frothy day. Pew, 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 pew. Cheers. The individual members of the group contributing, and then when it's flowing well, you have uh, something that almost becomes its own thing, and you all are contributing to it, and it becomes a, a wonderful thing, and it feeds back into the members of the group. Yes, beautiful. And the wider society. And it can affect, it can save the world, Keith. And it can save <laughs> the world. Absolutely.